Hi, welcome to Redox Reactions Part 3. My name is Dr. English, and today we're going to talk about how to work with half reactions. Specifically, we're going to define a half reaction, identify half reactions, given an equation, write half reactions, some practice, and then some more practice. So let's talk about how we define a half reaction. A half reaction is going to highlight the exchange of electrons as atoms and or ions are oxidized and reduced. Now we already talked about oxidation and reduction in the previous tutorial. What we're going to do now is actually apply that concept to a chemical reaction like the one that we see below. What we're specifically going to be looking for is a conservation of charge. Now what do we mean by that? We mean that when we look at a balanced equation and we break it down into what's being oxidized and what's being reduced, we want to make sure that the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. So let's look at our example here. We have potassium plus bromine gives us potassium bromide. We're going to take this chemical reaction here and break it down into two half reactions one representing oxidation and one representing reduction. Like I just said, when we identify half reactions, one half reaction is going to represent the loss of electrons, otherwise known as oxidation, and the other half reaction is going to represent the gain of electrons, otherwise known as reduction. So if we think about that previous equation, which is potassium plus bromine gives us potassium bromide, we look at the metal, the potassium, and we say, well, the potassium atoms are going to lose two electrons and become potassium ions. And we can see that based on this half reaction right here. Here's my metal, potassium. Okay, it's going to have an original charge of zero. When the individual potassium atoms lose their one valence electron, they're going to become potassium ions, which we see here as K plus one, because we know potassium can only have a charge of plus one. Collectively, between the two of them, they're going to lose a total of two electrons as each potassium atom gives up its one valence electron to become the ion. In the reduction reaction, we have liquid bromine, Br2, right here. So the bromine atoms that compose the diatomic molecule each will gain one electron and become bromine ions. Now we saw in the previous tutorial how this works with chlorine, but it wouldn't hurt to go over it one more time. Diatomic bromine as a Lewis dot diagram can be represented like this. I have Br and it has seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I have another bromine, so I'm gonna put a B and an R and it's seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right here, and the nonpolar covalent bond can be found right here. When we introduce two electrons that comes in, they're gonna come in and they're going to break this nonpolar covalent bond to form two bromine ions. So what we'll have, if we go back to our original blue bromine atom, it's, so it's Br, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we have our red bromine. We'll put that one over here a little bit. So Br, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. And then we have these two added on electrons that are being gained. So one, two. As each of these bromine atoms gains an electron, we are now going to have an overall charge for each of these of being negative one. So that is how each of these is going to become a bromine ion, which is why we can represent them as two Br minus one and not Br subscripted to minus one because that doesn't make any sense. We're forming two ions that each have their own full octet. Now let's look at what happens if we're given an equation and we want to write two half reactions. Step one, assign oxidation numbers. So this has already been balanced for me, so I'm going to look at each element and assign an oxidation number. So for lithium, lithium is going to have an overall charge of zero up here because it's a lone element. Oxygen is gonna be minus two, so minus two times four gives me minus eight. 
sulfur is going to have an overall charge of plus six. And how do I know that? Because I know the sulfate ion as a whole is going to have to have a charge of minus two. Therefore, the nickel must be plus two. I bring that down and I say to myself, plus two plus six minus eight, that all equals zero. So I have correctly assigned oxidation numbers for each of these elements here. Over on the product side, lithium is going to be plus one because it is a group one element. Oxygen is going to be minus two. So one times two gives me plus two. Negative two times four gives me negative eight. So therefore, sulfur must be plus six. And plus six, and I double check that, plus two plus six minus eight, that is all going to equal zero. So those oxidation numbers are correct for that particular compound. Then I go to Ni, nickel by itself is zero. So when I talk about what is being oxidized and what's being reduced, and even if this is a redox reaction, I'm looking for a change in oxidation number as I go from reactants to products. So I'm only going to ever have two different elements involved. I can look at this and I can say lithium goes from zero to plus one. That's gonna be one of the half reactions. And I can see that nickel goes from Ni plus two to Ni zero. So what's happening to the sulfur and the oxygens? Well, we call them spectators, they're not changing. Sulfur on the reactant side is plus six, and it's plus six over on the product side. Oxygen is minus two, and minus two over on the product side. So those aren't really changing. Could I have looked at the sulfate ions overall and say, well, sulfate's minus two and nickel's plus two and just leave it as that? Yes, I can, and that's a shortcut that I plan on using in the future. So you don't have to go through each element and assign oxidation numbers if you're working with consistent polyatomics, and we'll see that again in the future. So now what I want to do is look at the elements that have changed, that have gone from reactants to products, and identify what's oxidized and what's reduced. In oxidation, oxidation is loss of electrons. Leo, Leo says grrr. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. So I need to see my charge becoming more positive. So I look here and lithium is going from zero to plus one. That means it's lost electrons. So I'm gonna bring my coefficients down with me. So I'm going to say two Li zero is going to undergo oxidation and become two Li plus one with a loss of two electrons. Two electrons lost. Now you might say, well, why didn't you just put Li in a subscript of two? Well, a number of reasons. First, lithium's a metal. It's not a diatomic, so I'm never gonna have a subscripted two here. Also, it's an ion. I can see this subscripted two just tells me that there's two of the ions. So I'm not going to leave it as a subscript as I write out this half reaction. So if I look at this overall, two Li zero yields two Li plus one with a total loss of two electrons. Now let's look at the reduction half reaction. Ni, Ni is going from plus two, I'm going to gain some number of electrons, I'm gonna leave a little space there, and it's going to become Ni zero. So plus two to zero. If you think about a number line, I'm gonna go from plus two and it's gonna become more negative, so that means I'm gaining two electrons. If you are working with a previously balanced chemical equation, if you bring the coefficients down with you, the number of electrons lost should equal the number of electrons gained. Now let's look at another example, a synthesis reaction. Ca plus Cl2 yields CaCl2. The first thing I'm going to do again is assign oxidation numbers. So Ca by itself is going to be zero. Diatomic chlorine by itself is going to also be zero. Ca as part of a chemical equation is going to be plus two. And then the chloride ions involved is going to be minus one because minus one times two gives me minus two. There's an assumed subscripted one here, so this is gonna be plus two, and the whole thing is electrically neutral. So what is being oxidized and what is being reduced? Ca is going from zero to plus two, so I can see those oxidation numbers becoming more positive, so that's gotta be oxidized. 
and then the diatomic chlorine is going from 0 to minus 1. So again, my oxidation numbers are getting more negative, so that's got to be reduced. So let's translate that to the two half reactions below. So I'm going to write Ca, 0, an arrow, Ca plus 2. This reaction is going to lose a total of two electrons. Diatomic chlorine for reduction down here, that's going to have an overall charge of 0. It's going to gain a certain number of electrons and become 2Cl minus 1. Again, when I write this reaction, I'm not going to write this as Cl subscripted to minus 1. You can't have a diatomic with a charge. So when I do this, it's going to have a coefficient of 2 representing two chlorine ions. So therefore, each chlorine atom is gaining an electron to become a chlorine ion, so I'm gaining a total of two electrons. Charge is conserved because the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. Now what I'd like you to do is stop, try these problems as practice, see how far you get, and then check your work. Welcome back. Let's start with the first one here by assigning oxidation numbers. So I look at this and this is 4Al plus 3Mn NO3 4, 4Al NO3 3, and 3Mn. Now before I start assigning any oxidation numbers, I'm going to look for polyatomics because most likely polyatomics are not going to be involved in my redox reaction. So then there's a nitrate here and a nitrate here, so I am not going to assign oxidation numbers for those. I'm going to focus more on my aluminum and the manganese here. So you know, I know aluminum by itself is going to be zero. If I uncrisscross the manganese, this is going to have a charge of plus four. The aluminum here, as it's part of the formula, is now going to have a charge of plus three and manganese by itself is going to have an overall charge of zero. So the first thing I'm going to look at is what's losing electrons. Aluminum is going from zero to plus three. That's undergoing oxidation. I'm going to bring the coefficients down with me as I write these half reactions. So four Al zero, four Al plus three, each aluminum atom is becoming an ion, and as they become an ion, they're each losing three electrons. So that means the total number of electrons that I am losing here is 12. And it's fine to be losing 12 electrons. Let's go and look at the manganese. 3Mn plus 4 is going to gain some number of electrons, most likely 12, but I want to confirm that by looking at my charges and becoming 3MN0. So each one of these manganese ions is going to basically gain four electrons. Three times four gives me 12 electrons gained. And I can look at this and say the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained. Therefore, charge is conserved. Let's look at the next problem. Ba is zero. Chromium here, if I uncrisscross it, is going to be plus three. I'm going to ignore the acetate ion, as I imagine it is not going to be involved in my redox reaction. Uncrisscross the two here, so the Ba is going to become plus two, and the chromium by itself is going to be zero. As I look at these oxidation numbers here, I can see that Ba is going from zero to plus two, so that has to be undergoing oxidation. I'm going to bring the coefficients down with me, so 3Ba0 is going to become 3Ba plus 2. So I have three bromine atoms, and each is going to lose two electrons. So that means there's going to be a total number of electrons lost, which is going to equal to 6. Then I'm going to look at the chromium ions. So 2Cr plus 3, gaining some number of electrons and becoming 2Cr0. So the chromium ion to become an atom has to gain three electrons. There's two chromium ions here, which means I'm going to be gaining a total of six electrons. Again, charge is conserved because the number of electrons lost 
equals the number of electrons gained. Let's finish this up by doing a little more practice. So I want you to stop, look at the two chemical reactions that are presented to you, assign oxidation numbers, and see if you can write the two half reactions. When you're done, start up the video again and we'll see how you did. Welcome back. Let's start off by assigning oxidation numbers. So strontium is going to have an overall charge of zero by itself. Titanium is going to be plus three. Strontium as part of a chemical formula is going to be plus two. And titanium is going to be zero. Notice that I am completely disregarding the carbonate ions as they are polyatomics and not involved in the redox reaction. So the strontium is going from zero to plus two, which means it's undergoing oxidation. So I'm going to write three SR zero going to three SR plus two with the loss of six electrons as each strontium atom, when it becomes an ion, will give up two electrons. There's three strontium atoms here. So three times two loss of six electrons. The titanium, the thing that you need to be careful about with the titanium is this subscripted two. So I know it's not a coefficient like you're used to, but it still means that there are two titanium ions here, each with a charge of plus three. They need to gain some number of electrons right here to become two titanium atoms. Two titanium atoms, which is right there. So each titanium ion needs to gain three electrons to become an atom. And there's two titanium ions here, which means we are gaining a total of six electrons. So if we look at the number of electrons lost, which is six, and the number of electrons gained, which is six, charge has been conserved. Let's look at our final equation for this tutorial. So I have zinc. Zinc has an overall charge of zero. Hydrogen is going to be plus one. As we go to the other side, zinc is part of a formula now, so that is going to have an overall charge of plus two. And hydrogen, because it's by itself, is going to be zero. The nitrates I am going to, again, completely disregard because they are polyatomics and therefore not part of the redox reaction. When I look at this, Zn is going from zero to plus two, so that is losing electrons. So Zn zero going to Zn plus two with a total loss of two electrons. The hydrogen is being reduced because it's going from plus one to zero. So I'm going to write two H plus one. Each hydrogen ion is going to gain electrons. So I'm going to write a certain number of electrons right there, an arrow, and then my diatomic hydrogen right here. So I'm trying to make two hydrogen atoms. Therefore, each hydrogen ion is just really a proton. When each of them gains an electron, it'll become an atom because the protons and the electrons will equal each other. So that means I need to gain two electrons to make two hydrogen atoms and therefore form diatomic hydrogen. So the number of electrons lost equals the number of electrons gained and charge is conserved. So what did we learn in this tutorial? We defined the concept of a half reaction. We were able to identify half reactions from a chemical equation. We were given an equation we were able to write half reactions. We did some practice and then we did even more practice. Need more help? Please feel free to contact me. Have a great day.